This is Professor Uma Rao uh, from RV College of Engineering. Uh, in this lecture, we will be seeing about introduction to short circuit. In your previous course, you have studied about symmetrical faults. So as opposed to an unsymmetrical fault, a symmetrical fault has the same influence on all the three faces. Whereas unsymmetrical faults would cause different effects in different faces. So in your power systems one course, you have seen how to analyze symmetrical faults uh, for uh, say a single generator or for a fault at the generator uh, terminals, etc. So in this course, we will be studying about how to analyze larger networks. That is for the entire power system. How do I get uh, an idea of what is the effect of the symmetrical fault? So this is called as a short circuit. So in this lecture, I would be giving you an introduction to short circuit. So it is basically in module five and uh, the first part of it has algorithm for short circuit studies and formulation of Z bus, which you'll be using in short circuit studies. And the second half is about power system stability. Uh, again, the introduction of which has already been done in the previous course. And in this course, we will be studying the numerical solution of swing equation. Now, we all basically know what is a short circuit. So a short circuit occurs when part of a current carrying conductor touches or comes in contact with another conductor, giving rise to a path of least resistance. So actually when a short circuit occurs, the path of the current is not what it is intended for. That means it takes a path which it is not meant to take. So under normal conditions, the current that flows in a power system is the rated current of the equipment at which the equipment or the device is meant to operate, right? So all our electrical appliances, big or small, have a rated current. And we have protective equipment, which will protect the device if the current exceeds the rated value. Now, as compared to the normal currents, a short circuit current can be really, really large. Okay. And if you look at your protective equipment, like say circuit breakers, they will have some finite time for action. Okay. So in this short duration, the short circuit current will flow. Therefore, for a very short duration after the short circuit, it's possible that your devices and components of the network will be carrying very high currents. By high currents, I'm not talking of 10%, 20% more than the normal value. We are talking of 500%, 600%. So in terms of per unit, it could be five per unit, six per unit, sometimes as high as 10, 12 per unit. So if these high fault currents, they exceed the capability of protective devices, then it can result in large rapid releases of energy in the form of heat or in the form of intense magnetic fields. And sometimes the device may even explode. We call it as an arc. So we have seen arcs. We have all seen explosions resulting because of short circuits. And there are instances where entire buildings, you know, get burnt because of a short circuit. So we really have to be very careful about short circuit as the damage they can cause is immense. So is the short circuit same as overload, right? So we talk of overloads. So when a short circuit in a power system occurs, the voltage at that point is reduced to zero and the current of abnormally high magnitude flows through the network to the point of fault. On the other hand, an overload means that loads greater than the design values flow. So please be very clear about the difference between the two, okay? So in a short circuit, the current is very high around, as I told you, six times per unit, 10 times per unit. Whereas in an overload, it may be marginally greater, like around 1.2 per unit, 1.3 per unit. And the voltage in case of an overload 
drops, but it does not come to zero. Whereas in case of a short circuit, the voltage will be reduced to zero. The under voltage condition may extend for some time and for some distance beyond the point where the overload occurs. The currents in the overloaded equipment are high but are substantially lower than that in the case of a short circuit power system. Now, so we know now very clearly that short circuits are much more dangerous to the system than a simple overload. Let us look at some causes for short circuit commonly which occur. So a short circuit in the power system is a result of an abnormal condition in the system, which may be because of internal factors or which can be because of external factors. Okay, so I can tell you a simple internal factor. Whenever you have a winding, say a transformer winding or a motor winding, right? So in between the turns, you have an insulation. You have an insulation. So over a period, what would happen because of wear and tear, the insulation would get eroded. Therefore, the turns would make contact with each other and would result in a short circuit. So such an example is a case of an internal effect. So internal causes of a short circuit are normally breakdown of equipment or transmission lines or deterioration of insulation in a generator or a transformer. Such troubles are normally due to aging of the insulation and at times due to inadequate design or improper installations. So if your installation is not proper, if your grounding is not proper, then you can have short circuits, okay? So we should avoid improper design, inadequate design. And when the system is de designed, and when we choose our breaker ratings, we should see that we have given enough scope and room for taking into account the effect of short circuits. Apart from these internal effects, you do have short circuits, which are a result of lightning, so a sudden lightning can cause an insulation failure and an arc can strike between the line and the ground. An arc can strike even between two lines, causing a single line to ground fault or a line to line fault. Or uh, an external fault for a short circuit could be a prolonged overloading of the equipment causing excessive heating. See, all our devices and equipment are rated to carry some amount of overload, say 20% or 30% for a short time. So whenever we have an equipment, the manufacturer will tell you what is the overload rating, right? So as I told you, again, keep in mind, this overload will be about 20% or 30% more than the normal value. So yes, equipment are designed to take care of overloads, but not for prolonged periods. So the overload rating is different from the continuous rating, okay? So if you have an overload for a long period, then the excessive heating could cause, you know, short circuit in the windings or the related equipment. And external effect of a short circuit could also be because of some mechanical damage caused by uh, people or sometimes caused by animals, big animals in the vicinity. So these are some of the major effects of short circuits. So uh, lightning is one major condition driven by weather and on which we do not have much of a control, which is responsible for quite a few short circuits in the system. Now, what are the bad effects of short circuit? First one we all know because of the heavy current, it can cause excessive heating in the equipment. And sometimes this can lead to fire, okay? So uh, very commonly in large apartments, fire uh, starts at the basements because of some short circuits. And if we are not aware, you know, this fire can be really lead to a very big damage. Sometimes short circuit takes the form of an arc. An arc is struck, say, between the equipment and the ground, between the line and the ground and causes considerable damage to the system. An arc on a transmission line, if it is not cleared quickly, will burn the conductor severely, causing the line to break and resulting in a long time interruption of the line, okay? So if the line outage 
is because of a circuit breaker opening, then it will not be for a long time because the breaker will have an auto reclosure facility and will close again after some time. But if the line breaks because the conductor has melted, then you have to replace the line. It's not like closing a breaker. So you can have an interruption for a very long time. And short circuits, because of the heavy currents, uh, can have very low voltages, sometimes almost uh, you know, very close to zero, which can have a very harmful effect on the service provided to the system because the consumer is cut off. Okay? And if the voltage remains low for a few seconds, then the consumer's motors may be shut down and generators on the system may become unstable. Clear? So we have seen that short circuits are pretty bad for the system. So why do we need to calculate that? The first thing is a short circuit on a power system is cleared by the circuit breaker. So you need to know the short circuit level at a breaker's location so that you can choose a proper rating for the breaker. If the breaker rating is not proper, then it's very much possible that in the event of a short circuit, the breaker contacts may get welded because of the excessive current, in which case you will have a permanent short circuit, which may burn the equipment which is connected in series with the breaker. Therefore, it is very, very important for us to know the level of short circuit so that we choose proper ratings of the switch gear, switch gear which are meant to stall the breakers and in, you know, interrupt the short circuits. The magnitude of the short circuit in the power system also determines the setting and threshold values and also determines the type and location of protective equipment. Because if you take circuit breakers, you have a wide range of breakers. So the choice of the type of breaker may depend on the short circuit level. Therefore, study of short circuit currents and their magnitude is very, very important for the system. The magnitude of the short circuit current also determines the size of the protective reactors that must be inserted in the system so that the breaker is able to withstand the fault current. So please remember the circuit breaker is connected in series with the device it is meant to protect, right? So when a short circuit occurs, till the short circuit is cleared, the breaker will be carrying, the contacts of the breaker will be carrying the short circuit current, okay? And sometimes to limit the short circuit current, we insert reactors in series. We react insert reactors in series. These are called protective reactors. So the primary function of these reactors is to bring down or limit the short circuit currents. So the rating of this reactor will depend on the short circuit current to be expected at that location, right? And apart from the breaker, the short circuit current also enables us to make proper selection of the associated apparatus. What is that? Your bus bars, your current transformers, and any other measuring instruments uh, which you may have installed in the system because all these equipment must withstand the forces that arise due to the occurrence of short circuits. So thus you can see that short circuit level determination is very, very important from multiple point of uh, interest. Now, a symmetrical fault. So is one fault that gives rise to symmetrical fault currents. That means equal fault current magnitudes in all the three phases with a 120 degree displacement. This is called as a symmetrical fault. So from a symmetrical component point of view, a symmetrical fault contains only positive sequence components because it is a symmetrical fault and all the three currents are displaced by 120 degrees and are equal in magnitude. So a symmetrical fault constitutes only positive sequence current. So the most common example of a symmetrical fault is when all the three conductors of a three phase line are brought together simultaneously into a short circuit condition, right? Maybe because of a lightning strike, right? 
So uh, in fact, in most cases at any location, this is the most severe fault as compared to single line to ground fault or a double line fault or a double line to ground fault. This is the most severe fault. And therefore, all your protective equipment are designed around this fault. So when such a fault occurs, a heavy current flows through the equipment and can cause considerable damage and interruption to the consumers. So the symmetrical fault, as I told you, is the most severe and imposes heavy duty on the circuit breaker. Majority of the faults are unsymmetrical and symmetrical faults are generally rare. And I think you all know the most common fault is the single line to ground fault, which accounts for around 60 to 70 percent of the faults that occur. So from a circuit viewpoint, if you want to model a symmetrical fault, it would be as uh, uh, shown here, as shown here. So you can see here that all the three lines, all the three lines, there is a short circuit. So this is also called as a dead short, a dead short, okay? So we would be studying how to uh, evaluate and compute the currents under this condition. The short circuit current, what is the limitation? Right is limited by the impedance of the system up to that point of fault. Now consider the system, a simple system. I have a generator with a transformer and a line. So let us say somewhere in the line, a uh, short circuit occurs. So what limits the short circuit current? So you can see that since it's a short circuit, the impedance of the generator winding, the transformer, and the line impedance up to the point of fault, all of them in series. So this is what will limit the current at the point of fault. And to overcome this is why we insert series reactors. So apart from all this, you also have the uh, reactor which will come in series and you can design in such a way that it comes into existence only when the fault occurs and will bring down the fault levels. So the impedances limiting the symmetrical faults on the three-phase system are largely reactive. If you look at this circuit, the generator winding is reactive, that is inductive. The transformer winding is inductive. The transmission line resistance is negligible and it is predominantly inductive. And uh, therefore, uh, the limiting factor for these faults are inductive in nature. So these faults will be lagging the voltage by almost 90 degrees. Now, we have something called as the short circuit KVA or short circuit MVA. What is this? At any location, at any location, the short circuit KVA is the product of the system voltage, normal system voltage into the short circuit current expressed in KVA. And for higher voltages, it's also expressed in MVA. So short circuit MVA will directly have a bearing on the MVA rating of the breaker you choose for that particular location. Now, as I told earlier, we add reactors. It has a number of advantages. You can see uh, reactors limit the flow of short circuit current and thus protect the equipment from overheating. As well as once you reduce the current, the mechanical forces and the magnetic forces will reduce and therefore the destruction caused by the react by the short circuit is reduced in the presence of reactors of course i can't put reactor in every line in the system that would cause huge drops in the system so reactors are suitably connected at bus bars and at some key locations in the system to limit the fault levels and the other advantage of a reactor is that, you know, the disruption caused by the short circuit can be localized or isolated to the point where they originate without communicating the effect to other parts. So this increases the chance of continuity of supply to healthy parts of the system. And the third advantage is because you're reducing the level of the current you can use breakers of lesser rating or lower rating, which would be more economical. So uh, these reactors are used 
And as I told you, you cannot put them in every line or everywhere. So they are used in a limited fashion at some crucial locations in the system. Now, one simple thumb rule sort of a calculation for your short circuit current, what you can do, draw the reactance diagram of the system. You have studied how to draw the reactance uh, diagram in your power system analysis one course and find the percentage reactance up to the fault point right and find the full load current corresponding to the selected base kva and the normal system voltage at the fault point so you can find out the full load current you know the kva and you know the system voltage so you can find out the full load current right so now the short circuit current is given by i i is the full load current or the rated current into 100 by percentage x Clear? So 100 by percentage x. What is percentage x? Percentage x is the reactance of the whole network up to the fault point. So if you consider this case, this, this one, the percentage reactance from the generator up to the fault point, that would be percentage x, right? And how do you find i? You, uh, you find i from the, i is basically the base current. i is basically the base current. Right? So that gives you the short circuit current multiplied by the base KVA. It will give you the short circuit KVA. Short circuit KVA will give you the base KVA into 100 by percentage of X. So you can find out the short circuit current. You can find out the short circuit KVA. And based on these two parameters, you can find out what is the rating of all the equipment around that location your breaker what is the bus bar and any other pr protection equipment if you are using a hrc fuse etc okay now obviously this calculation is basically does not have too much of potential calculating the short circuit or kva or mva like this because for the simple reason that to draw the reactance of the system it's fine i can do it for two bus three bus i can draw but what if I have an actual grid? Because I'm talking of, of locating, designing your breaker locations. So if I'm having a grid, I can't draw the reactance diagram of the whole grid and try to calculate the percentage X at the point of fault, right? So therefore, we have algorithms by which we can determine the short circuit uh, KVA or MVA vis-a-vis uh, -vis the short circuit currents at a particular location so we will be studying the algorithm in detail in the next lecture so let me summarize quickly what we saw here so basically a short circuit would be a three-phase symmetrical fault a dead short circuit is when all the three phases are shorted and you would essentially have um, you would essentially have only positive sequence currents and of course, you can have a single phase short circuit also, like in the case of a single line to ground fault. But when we do a short circuit study, we would be studying three phase short circuits. That is dead short circuit of all the three phases. Uh, there are internal factors normally which are due to the wear and tear of the equipment in use. And also external factors like lightning, some mechanical damage, etc., which can cause these short circuits. And they are potentially very, very harmful for the system. And if they are allowed to persist for a longer time, they can damage the equipment of the consumer and also the protective equipment. And short circuit study is very important as they determine the rating of the protective equipment to be used in the power system. So in the next lecture, I will be telling you how to calculate the short circuit current for a practical system. Thank you.